session regular meeting of the Township Council is called to order. Madam Clerk. In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act of the state of New Jersey, adequate notice of this work session regular meeting of the Franklin Township Council was made by the posting on the front doors of the municipal building, posted on the township's website, and electronically transmitted to the officially designated newspapers, indicating that this work session regular meeting would take place via WebEx at 7 p.m. on Tuesday, April 27, 2021. Okay. We could have the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. States of America, for which it stands, one nation, one nation under, under God, 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 indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice for all. Not coming on the show, we're having some trouble hearing you before. Are you? Can we hear you now? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Okay. You could please uh, have the invocation. Okay. Oh God, the creator and the redeemer of all the faithful, hear our supplications and thoughts by infinite love and mercy. We shall give one of the strength and power in our thoughts and decisions to be for the benefit of all people at all time. Amen. Amen. May I remind council members who are uh, not speaking if they could mute. Uh, keeps down the cl clutter. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Councilman Embarrassing? Here. Councilman Chase? Councilman Chase? Here. Councilwoman Francois? Here. Mayor Kramer? Here. Councilman Oni Jaka? Here. Councilwoman Pruitt? Here. Councilwoman Udine? Here. Deputy Mayor Vastanella? Here. Councilman Wright? And Councilman Wright indicated that they would not be able to make it tonight. Um, Okay, commendations and proclamations. We have uh, four of them, but actually I'm going to pull the uh, Mayor's Monarch Butterfly Pledge. Um, I will have it at the next meeting. I did not do all my homework on it and I apologize about that. Uh, the first is the 60th anniversary of Independence Day of the Republic of Sierra Leone. Uh, Councilman Vassin, uh, sorry, Deputy Mayor Vassanella. Uh, yes, Mayor, I'm trying to get it pulled up here. Um, I'm wondering if the clerk has it. If I have it, if you would like me to read I it. I sent it in, in an email. Okay, that's what I was looking for. I'm running two computers here. That was today, correct? Correct, this morning. Yep, okay, hold on. Mayor, can you want to just do the next proclamation and I'll pull it up here? Sure. Councilman Embarrasson, donation to the Franklin Park Senior Club and Parkside Senior Club. I must compliment you, Mayor, for uh, um, pronouncing my name correct. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, yes, um, I just wanted to... Uh, announce a, a generous donation by Life Health Charity Foundation uh, to two of our senior clubs in town. Uh, this organization was brought to us, introduced to us by Commissioner Venki Saragopan of uh, Human Resources uh, Relations Commission. And this is the third donation that he has organized for us. The first one you may recall was for the uh, Community Relations Bureau. The second one was for the uh, Franklin High School. Uh, and this is the third one of that sort. And we thank uh, Venki, Commissioner Venki Saragopan uh, for his uh, efforts uh, on in this regard. Uh, so a little bit about uh, Life Health Charity Foundation. Uh, it, it, their main mission is to make life better for those who are 
and who are needy throughout the world. Uh, they uh, provide the donations for uh, poor nation education uh, of the kids and uh, provide the health care assistance uh, to people um, and um, generally to improve the quality of life for the people. Uh, so they have chosen Franklin Township's uh, recreation department um, to award two of their donations to uh, much needed um, funds to Parkside Senior Club and, and Franklin Park Senior Club. Um, so both of them will uh, receive equal amount of, the do of their generous donation. Today we have a number of uh, officials, uh, trustees from that organization. Uh, just read out the names uh, and then one of them, I believe, uh, ready to speak um, to the council. Uh, Mr. Siva Mupanar from Chicago, Mahendran Periyasamy from DC, uh, Porsche and Rajendran from St. Louis, Kanchana Pula from Long Island, New York, and I think we might have Trilata Pedalchi from Chennai, India. Uh, so at this time, I want to thank uh, Life Health Charity Foundation for their gen generous donation to Franklin Township. And I'd like to invite uh, Siva Mupanar uh, uh, to uh, say a few words. Uh, Bob, uh, can you unmute Siva Mupanar? Hello. Yep, you are unmuted. Everyone? Yep, can you hear? Yes, we can yep. hear you. Yep. Thank you, Mayor and all the councilmen, and thank you, Mr. Ram, for arranging this. We are really honored uh, to contribute uh, to the wonderful uh, uh, clubs, senior clubs, and uh, Ram nicely explained about uh, uh, what Life Health Charity does uh, all over the world. And to name a few, we held uh, several events we conducted two events to help uh, the Harvey uh, hurricane event in Houston, and uh, we conducted several events in uh, Africa, South America, and India. And uh, we are expanding our help, like you know, in uh, uh, US as well. And thank you for giving an opportunity to serve uh, the com community. And uh, we appreciate uh, the city's great work. And we will be handing the two checks, like you know, to you. Uh, either virtual, uh, if you could allow the video, or uh, we can transfer, like, you know, post a check to you. It's up to you. Thank you so much, everyone. Uh, thank you, Siva. Really appreciate it. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, Bob, are you able to uh, uh, show video image of uh, the person, the speaker, Siva Mupanar, or not? Yeah, I've yeah. just promoted them to a panelist. They should be able to show video. Oh, okay. Siva, yeah. We yep. Can see you now. Yep. So these are uh, the two. Uh, sorry. Copy of the checks. Can you able little to higher, see? Little higher. Yes. There you go. Okay. Yes. The, this is just a beginning. Our relationship with your uh, city will go for long term, and we are happy to help. Thank you, Siva. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for giving an opportunity. Uh, that's my part, Mayor. That's all. Oh, we have we have Diana Diane Harris from the uh, Parkside Senior Club. I think we have her. Would you like to, if you are there, Diane? Would you like to say a thank you word uh, to uh, Life Health Charity Foundation? Diane is unmuted. <laughs> uh, yes, thank you. I thank the council uh, on behalf of Parkside Senior. Uh, Citizens Club, I want to thank the Life Health Charity Foundation for its generous gift. Uh, this past year has been challenging for Parkside, and our meetings provided camaraderie and funded many social engagements through dues and fundraising. So uh, the gift will assist us as we um, continue to provide healthy snacks, modest honor honorariums for educational speakers, and other celebratory gatherings. And uh, it just allows us to, once we get back together um, in the building, to start without a pause. We don't have to sit down and try to gather the funds again. Um, there's a little seed money. And 
We appreciate it greatly. Thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. Mm -hmm. So, Ram, I want to thank uh, Venki Sada government, the commissioner for uh, coordinating and arranging this event as well. Yes. We recognize uh, Venki, Commissioner Venki with Sada government, uh, like we have done in the past. Thank you so yep. much. Welcome. That's all I have, Mayor. Mayor, did you want, you want me to read the proclamation now? Yeah, yes, Councilman, uh, Deputy Mayor Vassanella, are you yeah. ready? Yeah, yeah, I, I had it. It was a minimized window, and I can, but I got it here ready. Did um, uh, Council uh, uh, Minona Jaka, did you want to read the first couple paragraphs? Or would you like me to read the whole thing? I don't hear him, so I'll I'll read, and I'm sure Councilman will, will okay. want to comment. Okay, you can read the whole thing, Deputy Mayor. That's okay. Uh, is that okay, Mr. Councilman? Yes, it's okay. Okay, well, we'd love to hear your comments because I know you're very close to the community. So tonight is a special night in a way. I know often, um, mostly, uh, most years we celebrate um, the anniversary of the independence of Sierra Leone, which of course is is a big event for for any uh, country or or culture, and the. Um, uh, this year happens to be the 60th, so it's uh, obviously a special a special anniversary and a milestone. Unfortunately, and some members of the community might comment on it after the proclamation, but the original plan was to have a, a, a large parade and festival um, similar or even larger than the one celebrating its 50th anniversary, which obviously was about 10 years ago this, this week. Uh, matter of fact, today is the day, April 27th, of the actual Independence Day. It's like our 4th of July. So I'm going to read the proclamation. And my understanding is um, that the uh, West African and Sierra Leone community are going to, um, COVID permitting, uh, uh, have a, uh, a a large event and celebration um, sometime in the near future or on the next anniversary. So here's the proclamation, and I'll read. And I apologize for every reason. I can't get my video on there. Um, I would love for you to be able to see me, but uh, hearing it's the important part. I just want to apologize for the technical issue. Whereas the 60th anniversary of the independence of the Republic of Sierra Leone, West Africa, is being celebrated by citizens and friends of Sierra Leone and communities all over the world on April 27th, 2021. And whereas many local Sierra Leone, uh, Sierra Leone, organizations and individuals are dedicated to the principles of civic, economic, and educational programs by encouraging the teachings of African culture and social contributions of largely West African immigrants, of which is Sierra Leone community of Franklin Township, Somerset County, New Jersey, bearing witness to the progress, beautification, and achievements throughout our, our community. And whereas the mayor, deputy mayor, and council members of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset, State of New Jersey, and all the citizens of the township wish to acknowledge and acclaim the contributions of our Sierra Leone community and the life of our community. Now, therefore, we, Deputy Mayor James Vassanella, Councilman Charles Onajaka, on behalf of Mayor Phil Kramer and the entire Township Council of Franklin in the County of Somerset, New Jersey, do hereby proclaim April 27th, 2021, as Sierra Leone Day in the Township of Franklin, Somerset County, New Jersey. Um, so I don't know if Councilman Alajaka wants to comment or, or wait until a couple of the participants, um, if they could be elevated to uh, speak from the community to receive the proclamation and uh, speak briefly about the independence. Yes, that will be the, the best time for me to speak. Okay, I'm not sure if the hand is up or the attendees. I know they're out there. Is there a way? I would need to know who they are either by raising their hand using the chat function or star three if they're dialed in by phone. They are trying to get in, but they couldn't. Two of them called two, called me already. But I gave them uh, Bob's number, office number. To see if they can get them, they see if they can get in. They've been trying to get in. I see that Tina uh, Mayor, Jaha. Perhaps our surrogate. 
I see that Tina Jallo is on. Perhaps she wishes to speak. I have unmuted Tina Jallo. Good evening, everybody. Um, Good evening. I would like to congratulate the Sierra Leone community on their 60th anniversary. I'm with um, Councilman Vesanella. It's a shame we can't do the parade and have the great event that we had in the 50th anniversary, but sooner than later, we hopefully all of us can get together and do that. I also have um, my husband, um, Abdullah Jalo, who is a Sierra Leonean here. He would like to say a couple of words. Uh, this is Ben Jalo here. I'm very thankful the city has been a great host to the Sierra Leone community he has surprised us. We appreciate it and thank you all. Thank you. Uh, do we know of anyone else, Council uh, Deputy Mayor? Um, I, I, by going down the I, don't, I don't notice, I, I don't see the couple of gentlemen that I believe were coming on and I'm I'm eager to hear from uh, the representatives because I think they have some younger uh, youth or, or younger adults from the community that we're going to uh, respond. But uh, if Councilman Onajaka um, sent them the numbers, I'm, I'm not sure, Mr. McQueen. They can they can call in directly too with that number. If they go to the township website and to the calendar, there's a meeting link there with a dial-in number and code they would have to use. Okay. No, that's where they were directed originally. So, uh, if Councilman Onajaka um, doesn't see or no one has put their hand up, um, Mayor, I would just ask perhaps later if, uh, if reasonable, and one of them do come through on here, that perhaps we could let them make a brief comment at that point. There is one person with their hand up. Their phone number is 848-565. Uh, it starts with that. Um, I've unmuted the caller. Okay, I'm just. I've been check changing my mic here because there's an audio problem. Is uh, can people hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. Good, uh, good evening. Go ahead, speaker. Hi, uh, my name is, yeah, my name is um, Hindolo Bennett. I'm one of the youths um, for the SSCNJ. Um, the number that they gave us uh, at first, um, they told us that it was Zoom. So, um, um, and that link wasn't working. So I call on my phone. So maybe that's the issue that people um, have been having. So currently I'm using my phone and I call the number to join. Mm -hmm. yeah, so um, <clears throat> now I will let them know that, um, you know, they can use the, the number and um, just call from their phone. And um, I'm here representing the youth, so uh, and um, I'm accepting the proclamation on behalf of the community. Okay, do we have anyone else? I... Mr. Mayor, I do have somebody on the phone that I'm working through to get connected. Okay. Councilman Najaka, perhaps uh, if he had any comments he'd like to make about the independence while we're waiting for the other call in. Okay. Okay, I think that's okay I'm... Mayor. Yes, it is. Okay, Mr. Mayor, I have unmuted a caller. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I'm not. Are you getting me? Yes, we are yes. hearing. You are hearing me? Yes. Oh, thank you very much. Um, this is Abdul Gabisi, um, from um the Sierra Community of New Jersey. Yes. Um, we we're very happy of um, getting this um proclamation, which has been a, uh, an annual event, and it shows the the cohesion we have between the township, the Franklin Township, and the Sierra Leone community. So like uh, my former 
uh, member Indo 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 said we are happy, and we we appreciate this uh, proclamation. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Councilman, do you have anything else? Councilman Onichaka? Uh, yes, but Mr. Uh, Mayor, I'm going to have one more. I'm just working through getting the phone number. Councilman Onichaka, perhaps you can speak as he's getting the number. Okay. Okay. Um, I congratulate Sierra Leonean community and the entire West African community in Somerset on their 10th, on their 60th independence. The Syrian community has been a part of the African community and all of us are part of Franklin and Somerset. We still remember on the 10th of April, the last 10th of April, we observed the memorial service of our chairman and our community leader, Ambassador Kode Masara. Most of the time, this ahead, this independence celebration. Significantly, today is important to us as it marks one year of his death. One thing, we are happy that his legacy continued. So the long community consists of a large number in West, in, in Franklin Township, and they have been very supportive of the good governance in Franklin and Somerset. And they have a brotherhood relationship with Franklin and with the whole diversity we have in Franklin too. I wish Sierra Leone more prosperous year ahead and more collaboration with our township. Thank you, Mayor. That's what I have for it. Mr. Mayor, I do have one more caller that's unmuted. Go ahead. Go ahead, caller. Hello? Tindaloo, you can speak. You can speak, Miss. Hindalo. Caller, go ahead and speak. All right. Yeah. Can yeah. you hear me? Yes. Hello? Okay. okay. I'm hearing you. Okay. Uh, good evening. Now, my name is Tingolo Francis Barnett. I am the youth leader for the Children's Committee of New Jersey. Um, Mr. Mayor, Deputy Councilman, excuse me, sorry. <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, uh, Dr. Phil Kramer, Deputy Mayor Charles Onyejeka, Councilmen and Women of Franklin Township Municipality. Uh, thank you very much for presenting the Serving Committee of New Jersey, SSCNG, and the General Serving Committee this award um, proclamation. This proclamation will enhance our strong bond and for, um, a strong bond forged between the Serving Committee in Franklin Township and the community at large. The township has been a home away from home for many years. Since the beginning of this pandemic, the township has impressively fought to contain the threat of the virus and maintain the greater security of its inhabitants. Together, SSCNG and Somerset have achieved great things. The community has joined us in celebrating our independence, organized parades, and other social events to foster cordiality. This proclamation further enhanced the tie between our country, Sierra Leone, and the United States of America. The diversity and great inclusion we enjoy over the decades in this great township continue to be repeated and manifested. 
our community will continue to actively participate in township program to build on what our elders have nurtured. A special thank you goes to Councilman James Vassanella of the Fifth Ward and all those who played an instrumental role for granting us this privilege and honor, this proclamation. The SSCNG and all Sierra unions will continue to strive to be part of this diverse and welcoming township. This proclamation is for all those, for all of our loved ones who we have lost during this pandemic. Again, thank you for honoring our Sierra community in New Jersey with this proclamation. It is indeed an incredible honor for our community. Thank you and God bless. Uh, I would just like to say uh, this, that um, yeah, I was one of the young uh, men that Mr. Fodi Masari brought in this organization. He worked with us since the 10 years um, anniversary. You know, he was a leader and um, we miss him very much for all um, he has done. And uh, we are trying to step up to fill his shoes and uh, we are looking forward to working with um, all of um, the councilmen and the township at large for us to have a one and united community. Thank you again. Thank you. Um, I believe that is it, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> thank you, and I'll, I will just briefly say how important the Sierra Leonean community is to Franklin. It is the largest concentrated expatriate of Sierra Leone, um, the community uh, of Sierra Leone. Um, it, it's amazing how many people in Franklin are Sierra Leonean and they add to our culture and our richness by being here. Um, Madam Clerk, uh, who presented the Arbor Day proclamation? It came from the Shade Tree Commission. Okay, and I'll read it um, briefly. Proclamation for Arbor Day, whereas 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed to the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees uh, where the holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than a million trees. And whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our uh, precious topsoil by wind and water, lower our heating and cooling costs, moderate temperatures, clean the air, um, sequester carbon, produce oxygen, and provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees in our township increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of our business areas and beauty, and beautify our communities. And whereas in 2016, the Township of Franklin adopted a tree canopy cover goal of 42% to preserve and increase its uh, valuable tree canopy and um, now therefore I, Philip Kramer, the mayor of the Township of Franklin, County of Somerset and state of New Jersey to hereby proclaim Friday, the 30th day of April, 2021 as Arbor Day in the Township of Franklin, uh, Somerset County. And I urge all citizens to celebrate Arbor Day and support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands for this and future generations. Thank you. Um, so if we could now move on to public discussion, uh, do we have a motion to open to the public? I move. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed say nay. Motion is carried, we are open to the public. Mr. McQueen, I noticed that um, Board of Ed member Ed Potasnik is on. Uh, I know that he has a Board of Ed meeting any minute now. So uh, I thought uh, we could allow him to speak in public if he wishes to first. Yes, sir. Um, all members of the public, if you wish to speak, we ask that you use the chat function, raise hand feature, or hit star three on your phone to raise your hand. When you are done speaking, we ask that you lower your hand through the same thing. I have unmuted Ed. Thank you. And everyone, please state your name and address. You're limited to three minutes. No yielding of time. Uh, may only come up once. 
Go ahead, Mr. Potasnik. Uh, thank you, Mayor, members of the council. Uh, Ed Potasnik, 1008 Canal Road. Uh, congratulations to the Sierra Leone community here in Franklin and beyond, um, and the people of Sierra Leone on the 60th anniversary of independence. Um, and second, I wanted to highlight item 16 by uh, Councilman uh, Embarrassing, which talks about the importance of sending aid to India. Another important community within Franklin Township is a South Asian Indo-American community. And India, as I think we've all been seeing, has been hit very hard with, I think, what they're on their second wave of COVID um, and in dire need of uh, vaccinations and other um, raw materials um, to help uh, combat the virus. Um, so I just, the resolution asking President Biden uh, is really important, I think, for our community. I want to congratulate the councilman on uh, you know adding that to the agenda today. Um, and thank you all for uh, you know, everything that you're doing to help fight COVID in our home communities. But um, a lot of our communities are interconnected and uh, it's critical. So that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Potasnik. Mr. McQueen. Yes, anybody else from the public wishing to speak? We do have a caller. Um, caller, your number starts with 908-3005. You are unmuted, 908-305. Jim Johnston at uh, 34. Oh, I didn't hear you. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Somebody... Mr. No. Johnston, go ahead. Oh, is, everyone is there else can please. Oh, oh, oh so, so, sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, okay. Jim Johnston, 34 Norwich, please. Okay, I, I like what you said about Arbor Day and saving trees. And that is exactly why uh, we have our petition uh, to preserve the uh, South Middle Bush Road scenic corridor. Uh, we, now, we now have 2,147 signatures. Uh, to, to stop the proposed uh, houses of worship on South Middle Bush Road, uh, which will involve the tearing down of a large, pristine, beautiful forest. All the trees are going to be uh, torn down, and all, all the wildlife, all the indigenous wildlife that, is, that lives in there, the bald eagles, the, the great herons, and it's, it's all going to be gone. So I, I, I share your, your, your enthusiasm for Arbor Day, but uh, but but then too you know we have we have that going on so but anyway um uh, uh, during the uh, the past couple of weeks there's been some more discussions and some uh, new concerns that have been raised uh, that that property that they own on South Middlebush Road uh, uh, let me know if I go beyond my three minutes um, uh, it, they that. own that property oh okay uh, uh, they own that property uh, they have other meeting locations in New Jersey and New York that are that are rented spaces. OK, uh, we're concerned that if uh, if they, they own the property in, in Franklin, that's going to that, that's going to tend to draw large numbers of people from those other locations that are rented locations. And you know, we, we could end up having many, many hundreds of people coming to Franklin and, and all converging on South Middle Bush Road. And, and then when you consider that uh, you know, they have members and chapters all throughout the United States and, and indeed the whole world. You know, what happens if those people come over here? We could have potentially have thousands of people coming, coming here. So, uh, yeah, so, so uh, they, these are new concerns that were raised last a couple of weeks ago. Okay, uh, 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 that's all I have. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And um, I caution council members, this is uh, what he's talking about as a project before the zoning board, so we cannot comment. Uh, on that, and Mr. Johnston, uh, you put in a request about uh, open space expenditures. The manager has been working actually quite hard on getting that all together, uh, and I'm going to probably by tomorrow be sending a response to you. Um, Mr. Um, McQueen, anyone else? Yes, <clears throat> Mr. Mayor, currently I don't see anybody, but any from the public, anybody from the public wishing to speak, use the chat function, raise hand feature, or star three by telephone. Mr. Mayor, hold on. Uh, I... I I just got a chat notification that someone wants to comment. Yes. 
I I see that Jonathan White put in the chat. Just keep in mind the chat function is not monitored. Mr. White, I have unmuted you. Thank you, Jonathan White, Seven Gary Court. In the last year, America has had to take a very difficult look in the proverbial mirror. Many Americans now recognize truths that have been shouted for decades by black and brown Americans. It took a global pandemic and the utterly painful viewing of the life snatched from the lungs of George Floyd after the deaths of Breonna Taylor and numerous others before a significant majority of Americans were forced to reckon with the inequities black and brown people have suffered, suffered under. Whether it was the health and economic disparities that the pandemic laid bare as black and brown Americans died at devastatingly higher rates uh, than white Americans and at a younger age due to the disparate health care across the country, or the fact that black and brown businesses were shuttered at alarmingly higher rates, many of them shut out from the original PPP loan offers because of a lack of formal relationships with banking institutions, or whether it was the obviousness of the inequitable treatment black and brown people face at the hands of police, Americans have been put on notice that the time is now to do the work and hold themselves accountable to prepare, prepare a more equitable society. Any entity that hasn't done this self-reckoning self has either been hiding under a rock or hasn't appropriately evaluated its own values. It is with this in mind that I ask you, Mr. Mayor, Township Manager Vornlocker, Deputy Mayor uh, Vassanella, and members of the Township Council, uh, has Franklin Township asked itself if it has done or is willing to do the hard work of creating an equitable environment at every opportunity. I ask the township manager and the township council at the leadership of Mayor Phil Kramer to perform an equity audit and determine if the township is doing everything possible to support its black and brown residents, whether it be in the hiring and promotion of qualified township employees or the solicitation and contracting of black and brown owned businesses that typically see less than 1% of government monies allocated to services performed for the municipalities. I ask that this be a priority for the council for the remaining fiscal year with the report issued and with action steps uh, taken to address the inequities within the next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. Anyone else wish to speak? Yes, anybody from the public wishing to speak, you star three by telephone or the chat raise hand feature. Right now, I'm not seeing anyone else. I do not either, Mr. Mayor. I see no one else wishing to speak. Seeing no one coming forward, Mayor, from the public, uh, motion to close the public portion. Do we have a second? Second. Move then seconded. All in favor of closing por portion say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. Public portion is closed. Um, we are now going on to council comments, and we shall start with Councilman Onigiaka. Um, thank you, Mayor. It's I difficult to hear you, Councilman. Oh, hello. Can you hear me clearly now? That's a little better. Okay. Uh, I just I have a question for Bob Vanlaka. Um, I know, and most of us are aware of it that um, a dredging company was handling uh, the canal, the canal, and uh, by now I know they have they must have finished their job. So I want to find out up to now. And I know they've not cleared the parks around the canal, which we know that they they promised to do that, and they're going to clean up the parks. And we are aware that the summer is is fast approaching, and the pandemic is is slowly going down. So I want to find out if they have the intention to clean up the park, and when they clean up the park. As people will, uh, as the summer is coming closer, you no, know, the residents will like to use the park. This is the question I have for Bob. 
Okay, I, I, I'll reach out to the project manager for the construction company and the executive director of the uh, New Jersey Water Supply Authority and see if I can get an answer for you, Councilman. I'm sure that it, it needs to be done. I know it needs to be done as part of the project uh, agreement with the town. So I will uh, reach out to them tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Well, that is what I have for the night. Thank you, Councilman. Thank you for looking out for East uh, for East Millstone. I almost called it East Franklin. It's West Franklin. Um, okay, Councilwoman Crystal Pruitt. Thank you, Mayor. Um, so the only thing I really have to report out on is public safety. Um, we had a meeting today um, or this evening before. Then, um, but before I do that, um, I do want to acknowledge, um, you know, a, a, a bit of what uh, Mr. White had brought up, but I wanted to kind of acknowledge the, the Chauvin uh, verdict on the George um, Floyd trial. Um, and I also wanted to acknowledge uh, the statement um, put out by our police department and um, specifically police director Roll um, in speaking of that, but I did want to take a minute um, to say a few words um, about that verdict um, because I did kind of talk about, you know, the stress of that trial. So um, if you'll indulge me. Um, so I want to say the morning of the what would be the announcement, I literally woke up and laid in bed and I felt anxious and unsettled and I called a colleague and asked, what am I supposed to do? As a black woman, as a moral human being, I felt lost after posts, after posts and videos and after videos of black men, women, children of color being murdered over and over on repeat and hearing and witnessing people rationalize their executions, their death, calling into question their very character. What am I supposed to do? I asked my colleague because I didn't have an answer. I was in pain, I am in pain, a collective pain that we have carried from generation to generation in a country that considers our lives, our worth, our citizenship conditional. What am I supposed to do? Because I don't want to do anything except try and make it through the day. Sorry, I called her because while I am a black woman, I am also an elected official, a person elected to a seat of power. And I have a responsibility to not just myself, but to everyone who I represent. So I asked, what am I supposed to do? Because I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't not say anything about this because if I am hurting here in Franklin Township, so far away from Minneapolis, then there are residents that are hurting too. And I came here and asked for your votes because I wanted to be in a position to bring truth to power, to give a voice to the voiceless. And after a year of this pandemic and going in police shootings and social unrest, I was struggling on what I'm supposed to do. How can I make the people I represent feel seen, feel safe, when I didn't feel like that myself. So my colleague told me, write a statement, one for if he's found guilty and one if he's found not guilty. So I sat down and tried to make two different statements, but I couldn't because the statement was the same. One guilty verdict does not erase the killings of black and brown people by police, and it doesn't make our community feel safer and while for Mr. Floyd's family, it may bring them closure and a personal ju justice, what we witnessed with that verdict was accountability. A man was held accountable for his actions, but for so many of us, we held anxiety in our chests because we knew that accountability had been avoided before. Our experience has told us that we shouldn't get our hopes up because the system will protect itself, not us. Because to me, when people clamored about justice being served, I didn't feel that because to me, justice means change. Justice is ensuring that communities do not fear the police. 
justice is continuously and consistently holding officers and government accountable to ensure safety and transparency. Justice is dismantling systems that have perpetuated and condoned these murders in the first place. Let me be clear. I have great affection for our police force and every single one of our officers. I have tremendous pride in our department and significant trust in our leadership staff, especially under police director Sproul. And I am confident that they have taken the events that have occurred this past year seriously and working to strengthen their relationship with the community. But as I sat down and thought about this, and asked myself what I'm supposed to do, what became clear to me was what I'm supposed to do is to make sure that the events that have occurred and continue to occur post verdict do not happen here. What I'm supposed to do is to keep this community safe and make it clear that the type of behavior cannot and will not be allowed to take root here. What I'm supposed to do is keep this community safe and what I'm supposed to do is hold space for the pain and fear of my community and hear them and make sure that it does not go unanswered. What I'm supposed to do is work with the police director, our department and my colleagues here on the council to make it clear that we take all police related incidents, even if they're out of state seriously, that we take justice seriously and that we be held accountable because that's what we owe you as residents. So that's what I'm supposed to do. And that's what I'm gonna continue to do. And to that end, I'm gonna to talk to you about what we discussed in our public safety meeting. So we were able to go over um, or presented the draft annual report by police director Sproul. And that report um, about operations in the department will be made public and will be presented to the public next council meeting. So I encourage the public to tune in to see what's going on in their department. I also want to report out that on May 4th, the police department will be having another Tuesday night talk. They will be talking about police and community relations, um, use of force, summer safety, and they will have a special guest and that would be uh, Pastor Sores or Buster Sores. Um, First Baptist Church. On May 5th, they are holding their virtual citizens and citizens academy. And because that is virtual, they can accommodate more people. I encourage residents to sign up and register and learn more about their department and more about policing and more about their rights therein. Um, I also want to report out that um, our police department self reported their use of force. Um, our department was not recorded in the New Jersey Attorney General's uh, use of force dashboard. Um, so our department self-reported. They had 13 incidents of use of force, um, mostly mental health um, related incidents with minimal force and most with just restraints in hand combat. Um, but there is also a press release that the department sent out outlining um, that in more detail. So I encourage folks to check that out as well. Um, I also want to report out that police director Sproul will be speaking at the 10 a.m. service at First Baptist Church on Sunday. Um, for those who of you who are members of the church, she will be there um, to speak. Um, she arrived, I think she spoke maybe about a year ago. So now she's coming back to talk about, you know, her time there. Um, and I want to also acknowledge um, that there have been uh, a few uh, major incidents um, in the township, and I do want to just report out that those are being investigated by our department, as well as uh, prosecutor's office and other law enforcement entities as necessary. Um, and I, I say all this because I take what I said very seriously and I take everything that's been happening very seriously, and I want to show that this is what we're doing to kind of address that. This is what we're trying to do to um, strengthen the relationship in this community and challenge a culture that has allowed um, the things that we've been witnessing um, over and over and over again to happen. This is how we are going to challenge that and do what we can to support the community. Um, 
And one last last thing for the police. Um, I want to, in a positive note, I also want to uh, wish uh, Officer Juan Morales a happy retirement and thank you for your service to our community. Um, with that being said, um, that's probably the most I've ever really spoke. Um, so I'm going to give my time back. Um, thank you, Mayor. Um, and the community, we hear you and we're here to protect you and support you and we take everything very seriously. So thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman Pruitt. Councilwoman Kimberly Francois. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So Councilwoman Crystal Pruitt, that was very eloquent and very heartfelt and very sincere, what you just did. And I wanna encourage you to continue to fight for our community. I want to encourage you to continue to work with our police director, Sproul. I want to continue, uh, encourage you to continue to lead the council public safety committee and continue the good work that you're doing there. And I want you to, uh, to encourage you to continue to live up to the passion that you have for the work that you're doing for our community. And I want to encourage you to continue to fight for our community and to hold our police department accountable and hold us accountable as well to help you do what we need to do for the community. Um, so thank you for that. Thank you for that. That was very eloquent. And thank you for all the work that you're doing with our police department, and our police director and leading that effort for the council on that subcommittee. The only other thing I want to say, Mr. Mayor, is um, I want to congratulate the Sierra Leone community for their 60th anniversary Independence Day of today, April 27th. And it seems that they're celebrating that all over the world. And uh, we do have a wonderful Sierra Leone community here in Franklin Township. They've been very actively involved. They've done a lot of good things in the town and uh, they've been joint with us for, for many years. I've attended their parade. They, they know how to celebrate, and um, I'm, I'm very happy that we acknowledge that they were having their 60th anniversary independence today. Thank you, Deputy Mayor James Bassaneller, and thank you, Councilman Charles Onyajaka, for bringing them to the meeting tonight and allowing them to speak. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That's all I have. Thank you, Councilwoman Francois. Councilman Ram Ambar Ambarasan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, so um, we uh, at the Community Foundation our members met um, on April 14th. A uh, couple of action items uh, that um, I, I just want to report out. Uh, one is uh, the 2021 Heller Foundation, Foundation Scholarship um, was approved and it would be dispersed uh, to the uh, selected recipients. Uh, we thank uh, the Heller Foundation uh, for their uh, continued uh, donation uh, for this wonderful cause. Um, and then um, I think we had a discussion about um, uh, funding our uh, seniors, uh, uh, how to um, uh, get them to doctor's appointments. Uh, Councilman Pruitt uh, is uh, going to be following up on that uh, and hopefully uh, we would have some um, solution to that uh, very shortly. Uh, on the 17th of October, I mean, uh, April, um, there was a, a first anniversary of uh, uh, the uh, passing of Ambassador Mansare, uh, as you uh, uh, may remember, he is a dear friend uh, and a very um, friendly uh, to, the, uh, to the whole community. Um, um, and it was a heart-wrenching loss that we experienced due to COVID. And uh, I participated in the memorial along with uh, uh, Councilman Charles Oninjaka uh, on Saturday. Um, and I think we all uh, remember him and uh, let's pay our respect to him uh, in uh, posthumously. Uh, and then um, on the 24th, last Saturday, Councilwoman Odin and I uh, had the pleasure to visit uh, Middlebush Park. I will let her uh, report uh, some of the things that we found. One of the best kept secrets in town. I think we uh, had a chance to uh, discover that. 
um, and I think we have some Facebook uh, postings on on, on that uh, visit. Um, our uh, next meeting of the Human uh, Relations Commission is coming up on the 28th. Our, uh, our special guest uh, this month is uh, Jamie A. And, uh, we are going to be uh, talking about the anti-hate, uh, uh, um, anti-violence uh, against uh, Asian uh, Americans uh, this time around uh, due to some of the events, the past events, gun violence. Um, against Asians, and I think I, you know, in all the uh, other um, more critical events uh, happening in the uh, in the country, um, we we forgot to uh, mention the um, uh, shooting of uh, the Sikh uh, community family members uh, in the uh, warehouse uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I think I recollect uh, Mayor recognizing the Sikh uh, community. Uh, in his uh, address last uh, in the last meeting, uh, just after that we uh, we witnessed a gun violence against uh, a Sikh family there. Uh, really sad. Uh, and I think um, another uh, crisis in the uh, in the other part of the world uh, uh, due to COVID uh, tsunami we call it in India. I, I, I migrated from India 40 years ago, and to see this uh, happening uh, in India, uh, uh, it's really, really, really heart wrenching. Um, it is uh, rapidly approaching the level of uh, US infections and the deaths. Um, it's got 1.3 billion people, four times the population of US, and if left unchecked, uh, the devastation it's the COVID is going to cause uh, would be uh, tremendous. Um, the um, country needs a lot of help and support uh, in terms of uh, uh, quickly manufacturing uh, vaccines, uh, therapeutics, uh, most importantly, oxygen supply to uh, patients uh, that are dying without oxygen it's a it's a tremendous it's a tremendously disturbing sight uh, on the news and then the social media that I have been seeing and we we ask uh, um, every one of us to keep uh, uh, the uh, community Indian community in, in your thoughts and prayers and uh, we are asking the Biden administration to help India uh, with uh, some of the materials that they need uh, and uh, supply um, the oxygen um, tanks uh, that uh, we have. And I think lots of other countries have stepped up and uh, sending um, these sort of materials and supplies to uh, India. And uh, we, we uh, on behalf of the Indian community, I uh, thank them all. And uh, I, I wrote a letter, an uh, email to our elected officials uh, at the uh, uh, at the congressmen and the senators, um, congresswoman and the senator, uh, on Sunday morning, and and uh, lo and behold, on uh, Monday, uh, Biden announces that uh, they are going to open up supplies to India. So my I think my email was very effective, uh, as uh, Councilman Chase commented uh, to me uh, privately on his email. Uh, but um, kidding aside, it's a very serious uh, situation in India. So if uh, we can do anything uh, to help the country in need, um, we would be very, very thankful. Uh, again, you know, the uh, we are not safe if rest of the world is not safe. Uh, so uh, we cannot be just an island. The country cannot be just an island. It's a global economy. It's a global health crisis. We have to do what we can to help others. Uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councilwoman Shipa Udin. Thank you, Mayor, and good evening, everyone. Um, I have just a couple of things to report today. Um, I had a meeting with the Canal Walk um, group of uh, about 40, 40 plus uh, folks that showed up on my meet and greet. Um, they had 
great questions and I think it was a successful meeting. So thank you um, to to the team that uh, invited me over, um, Deanna, Paul and um, Bruce. So as Councilman Ram said, um, Middlebush Park, we uh, went there to visit on the 24th and um, I reported some of the key action items back to uh, Mr. Vortlocker so he can take a look at that with uh, the DP do just some com common um, maintenance issues came up. Um, I think some of them are low hanging um, items that can be quickly um, assisted for public safety. Um, and then there are some long term um, things that we have to look at uh, as a whole. Um, just about on the soccer field, there were a lot of concerns around uh, fences and um, I think um, some of the zip ties were coming out um, and then the paving of the roads. Um, apart from the maintenance um, things that we reported, residents were overall very satisfied. Um, you can see the energy in the park um, and just them being very happy and using the facility. So um, kudos to the team for, I know there's been a lot of work behind opening that park. So um, it looks like it's, it's a very successful park and residents are definitely using it. I think, um, you know, just by looking around, it was about three, three to, I want to say 300 or so plus re people were there uh, between the recreation activities that was going on. Um, Councilman Rem and I, um, we took the little trail in the back and we um, we found the little treasure on zip lining and we tested and it worked fine. Um, you know, we actually felt like kids again, um, just getting on that and using it. So if, if you haven't um, been there and, you know, you want to take your kids or family out, um, please, you know, make sure you do that. It's, it's a really nice um, little section in the park. Um, with that being said, I know there, there were folks about um, reaching out to me as well, asking for how they can volunteer on some of the recreation. I think Councilman Rem also had some folks reach out to him. Um, we were told that, you know, the coaches asked if, if there are any volunteers um, that want to spare the time and assist uh, um, uh, the recreation parks of games, um, soccer, basketball, or baseball. They can go directly on Saturday and just meet with the coach. I think they have a, um, a document there that they can fill out and register. Um, but the other things are um, came up from the residents in second ward was are there activities going on for our youth in the summer? And there are. Um, I think our township page has a lot of um, summer camp things going on. Franklin um, Police Department has activities that are going on as well. My kids attended their um, their FIT program, so it's a very uh, good program on Wednesdays. Um, I think it's rain and shine every Wednesday. They have a program available for the kids, so um, feel free to um, also jump on that. Um, congratulations to the uh, Sierra Loan. Um, you know, you have a, uh, Independence Day, 60th Independence Day, which is a very big milestone. Um, I think Councilman Ram also mentioned about what's happening in India, and that's very close as well, near to me. And, um, you know, I think what he mentioned is is very hard fun and you know we all have to stick together um i am here if anyone wants to talk about what's happening or if there's anything that i can do to assist um, please reach out to me and finally i think what councilman truth mentioned is also again um, i want to echo that we are here to support you right if there's something that's needed or if there's something that we feel that we need to mention out or talk this is why we're here in the council and um we're we're definitely here to support our residents. That's all, Mayor. Thank you, Councilwoman Udin. Councilman Chase. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We had a on April 17th a cleanup in the woods at Naaman Williams Park, sponsored by the Environmental Commission. The Lorraine Watershed <coughs> Partnership and the Watershed Institute, <coughs> and we, the organizers, sort of didn't try quite as hard as usual to get as many people as possible because of the COVID virus. But I think we uh, generally socially distanced effectively collected a lot of material. I haven't seen a figure yet on the quantity of material collected. However, we really only cleared about half of those woods, plus there's a further area across Matilda 
uh, avenue there, whether it's Matilda Avenue or Matilda Street, I hear different opinions on that. So we'll probably be going back there in a couple of years, uh, although we also have to go back to Seely's Brook uh, by the ShopRite, <clears throat> which we have repeatedly cleaned up, but material continues to accumulate. We hope that with the ban on plastic bags, uh, there will be somewhat less accumulating there, plastic bags and styrofoam cups. Um, and the uh, where Environmental Commission is also interested in developing <clears throat> an outreach to township businesses about the plastic bag ban. It doesn't take fully effect until next year, although I've noticed at least one business that I shop at, although it's in South Brunswick, uh, that has already informed its customers no more plastic bags. Everyone should begin, uh, should get a reusable bag or several of them in case you go to several stores and start using it now. Uh, finally, at the risk of blowing my own horn, I was awarded the Ted Stiles Award of the uh, Watershed Institute at their annual meeting uh, last night. Uh, I've received congratulations from members of the Environmental Commission and others who heard about it. And even the, Mr. Puskas took the trouble to telephone me with congratulations, but <clears throat> I guess it's for all the years I've been working on the environment in Franklin Township. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Thank Chase. You. And um, now, oh, there he is, Deputy Mayor um, Bassanella. You're muted, Deputy. You're muted. Thank you, Mayor. I'm using a different computer. I didn't see the little tab that said camera. It's so small. So you were fortunate you didn't have to see me up till now. But on a serious note, a uh, very serious note, uh, thank you, uh, Councilwoman Pruitt, um, for your heartfelt words. Um, I can't say uh, enough good things about your commitment and your your work with public safety and more about justice because you can't have safety without justice and you can't have justice without safety. So thank you. Um, anyway, um, Sierra Leone, I just wanted to mention and thank you, Mr. McQueen and mayor for, for sticking with us. I know it was a little, um, uh, uh, you know, difficult technically there, but I am so happy that the gentleman and I forget his name. I didn't write it down. The, the young man that spoke, uh, the last person who spoke uh, about Sierra Leone. Um, I was just so happy to um, hear from the youth and I didn't know what they were going to say, but I know it was told to me that they'd like to have um, uh, the various communities that represent or the various organizations that represent uh, Sierra Leone and West African um, uh, residents here uh, asked if a, a younger person can, can speak. And I thought that was wonderful. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Mr. Manzure, although there's many wonderful leaders in the Sierra Leone and West African community, uh, Fodi was just um, amazing for so many years until he passed recently because of COVID. So um, I, I, I did want to mention that. And, um, you know, for those who don't know, uh, obviously we have so many cultures and so many uh, different people from so many different places in this um, town. But, you know, I, I have a familiarity with the Sierra Leone and community in specific and the West African in general. And I and I appreciate their contributions to the town. And I remember speaking to many uh, leaders, including uh, Mr. Manzare over the years. And, and what was so important and always a mission of theirs uh, was to get youth involved, get youth involved in government, get youth involved in the community. And um, 
it, it, it took a while, and but I'm so happy that every, people of all ages, but especially the youth, are starting to get more involved. You're breaking up, Councilman. If everyone could go to mute to help out the councilman so we could hear him. I think it's his computer, Mayor. Thank you. I know. Hello? Where's your problem? Hi, we had a lot of trouble hearing you for the last minute. Can you hear me, Mayor? I'm sorry. Now we can hear you. We lost about a minute and a half of what you were saying. I apologize. So I don't want to. I don't want to um, uh, take up too much time. But I was just uh, commenting on how happy it was to see the youth, uh, the Sierra Leone uh, uh, member from a young member of the community speaking, and that so many of the youth. Uh, you know, which I guess are now first, second, third generation growing up in Franklin are being part of the community and the landscape. And I, I was moved on and I don't know if this is where you lost me, but I, I wanted to acknowledge uh, we have so many groups and organizations in town. One of them, uh, Sister to Sister, who had an event this past weekend. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to attend because I had committed to the stream cleanup. Um, but I know Councilwoman uh, Francois and other council people have been uh, big supporters of them over the year and I look, years, and I look forward to their events coming up. Um, but this past weekend, I participated in the stream cleanup. Um, and uh, for those who, who who may not have ever been in one, they're fun. They're a lot of work. You get dirty. Um, and uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Chase, Councilman Chase, who, um, dare I say, was probably the oldest person there probably dragged out as much or more uh, uh, junk, garbage, litter than anybody. And I say that because, um, you know, it's one thing to talk about the environment and it's one thing to support environmental issues, um, but it's a whole other thing to literally get out there and, and get your hands dirty and your feet dirty and your clothes dirty. And um, um, I, I hope we do many more cleanups. It, it's wonderful for the town and, and a tribute to John Clyde, who... Um, I think it's still named after his annual stream cleanup. He started it. So um, the other meetings real quickly, I attended a shade tree committee meeting. Um, Mayor, I think perhaps you might want to be the liaison now since. Uh, <laughs> no, um, I'm just joking. I would have read the Arbor Day, but um, thank, thank you for reading it. Um, they did not put out minutes. Uh, I'm fascinated with the amount of work they do and the commitment on the couple meetings that I have sat in on as the council liaison. And I look forward to delivering the minutes and talking more about their um, activities uh, that at our next council meeting when when the minutes are released from their past meeting. Uh, this week we have a, a public works uh, committee meeting and we'll be having a land use uh, meeting um, coming up soon. We'll report out on, on those at the next council meeting. And I believe that is it. Sorry about the technical glitch, Mayor. No, that's fine. And I apologize. I wasn't fast enough on my feet uh, <laughs> to think that you're the new um, shape. No, I'm, yeah, I'm kidding. Seriously, okay. thank you. And um, <clears throat> so for my comments, Councilman Chase, you did not need to uh, pat yourself on the back because I had planned to. Um, the Watershed Institute Edmund W. Stiles Award for Environmental Leadership is awarded to a community leader who demonstrates outstanding leadership, dedication, and passion in advancing the cause of environmental protection and stewardship. This award is presented in honor of the late Edmund W. Ted Stiles, Professor of Ecology at Rutgers University. Among numerous leadership roles, Ted served as the Watershed's Board of Trustee from 1991 to 2004, a, as board chair from 1994 to 1997, and as a member of the advisory board until his passing. That's, that's Ted Stiles, not Ted Chase. Ted Chase, Jr., Township 
uh, Franklin Township's few in individuals have dedicated more of their time to their community than Ted Chase. In nearly 50, a nearly 50 year run for the volunteer service Franklin Township, Ted has served on the Township Zoning Board, which he had joined in 1972. I hadn't even graduated high school yet. Planning Board, Environmental Commission, Open Space Committee, Green Team, Historic Preservation Advisory Commission, and Kingston Advisory Committee. Ted was elected to, as councilman in 2009, 2009 and has been reelected to the position ever since. Ted has also served as a loyal volunteer for the Watershed Institute as a stream watch water quality monitor since 2005 and as a regular participant in our annual stream cleanup events since these annual events began in 2006. He served on the boards of the New Jersey Conservation Foundation and the DNR Canal Rod Watch. Ted grew up in Dover, Mass, and in 1969 moved to Franklin to become a professor of the Department of Bio Biochemistry and Microbiology at Rutgers University uh, School of Biology and Environmental Science, formerly Cook College at Rutgers University. He taught until 2007, and although now retired, he still teaches a graduate course. He's been married to his wife, Victory, for more than 50 years. Woo. They have two children and two grandchildren. Congratulations, Ted. You are, the award is well-deserved. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I had that in my pocket. Um, okay, and then the last thing I'd like to speak about is COVID. Um, Things are loosening up as far as the governor's uh, restrictions, and that's great. Um, but it's still time to, to be careful. I still wear a mask. You know, if I'm outside alone, I, I, I won't have to wear one. But I work in a hospital and I wear two masks, N95 covered by a surgical mask every day, all day long, and I feel comfortable wearing it. The thing that's concerning me most lately is people, uh, initially people couldn't get the vaccine and I was inundated with emails and uh, phone calls about people needing to get the vaccine, wanting to get the vaccine, how could they get the vaccine? And I helped them as best I could. Now the supply and demand curve is about to flip and we're going to have more supply than demand. And that's unfortunate in a way because of the lack of demand. Some people have vaccine hesitancy. Some people don't believe in it. For the people who don't believe in it, I, I, I don't know what to say. But for the people who are afraid of the vaccine, I ran to get the vaccine. If, I, if, if it's determined that a third dose is required, I will be the first in line to get that dose. We had a little bit of a pause on Johnson & Johnson. And I understand if you're a woman under 50, how you might be somewhat hesitant, but far, far, far more people die of antibiotic um, reactions than ha have died from Johnson & Johnson vaccine. We take antibiotics without even thinking about them. Their allergic reactions to antibiotics are quite common and they can be fatal, but we don't think, we don't, we don't hesitate to take an antibiotic. Please, 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 I, I know it can be scary. I know you feel like the vaccine was come up, was, uh, was developed very quickly, but millions of people have taken these vaccines and very, very, very few people have died. Most drugs don't have that good of a record. So please bite the bullet, go out there. As I, we used to say in the Air Force, close your eyes, light your hair on fire and go for it. Um, it's it's important not only for you, but for the entire community. And that's all I have. Mr. Manager, your comments. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a few brief comments. Just to, uh, to kind of echo uh, Councilwoman Udine's comments earlier about re recreation activities, I'd like to bring to the attention uh, of our listening audience here, those opportunities upcoming for uh, our rec from our recreation department, 
There's a flag rugby program that is currently um, uh, being, uh, uh, the registration period is open for the flag rugby program for ages five through 14, where children will learn to run, pass, and score with a rugby ball. Uh, players will be separated into age groups for drills and games of flag rugby. Uh, that's a new one for us. I think that might be interesting for some of our kids to participate in. There's also a, a virtual uh, program uh, that is for grades 7 through 12. It's called Biological Breakout, a virtual science escape room uh, that's being sponsored by the uh, Recreation Department, and it will take place on May 1st from 2 to 4 p.m. It's open to grades again, 7 to 12. Sign up for teams of 1 to 3 people. Enter a virtual science escape room with friends and explore different areas of science, and there will be Amazon gift cards as prizes. Um, and the last and, and probably the most frequently asked about is that we will be having our summer camp program in the parks this year. Um, the full day and half day programs are currently open for registration on the township website. Anyone looking to register their children for summer camps, I encourage you to visit the website and uh, get your kids registered before they fill up. And that's all I have, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Manager. And I just, uh, here we go. Uh, I lost the agenda for a second. The next item would be council discussion items, but we have none. Item number 10, approval of the minutes. I present the following minutes to the Township Council for approval. Township Council work session, regular meeting, April 13th, 2021 at 7 p.m. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone like to? Edit the minutes. If not, Madam Master Clerk. Councilman Embarrassing? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udeen? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Time to pay the bills. Approval of the warrants. Warrants in the amount of two million fifty-two thousand five hundred nineteen dollars and fifty-four cents on April twenty-seventh, twenty twenty-one, is presented to Township Council for payment. Do I have a motion on the uh, warrants? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Anyone like to pull an item or question an item? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassing. Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Okay, we are now on to item number 12, uh, which is 2021 Hamilton Street Special Improvement District Budget. Uh, first is a resolution. Uh, 2117 to read the calendar year 2021 Hamilton Street Special Improvement District budget by title is presented to Township Council for adoption. Do we have a motion? So moved. And the second. Second, second there. Any discussion? Seeing none. Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassin? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Onijaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Thank God. I'm always afraid you guys are going to do to get me by making me read the whole thing, but then you'd have to listen to the whole thing. So, uh, public hearing 2021. Hamilton Street Public um, Special Improvement District budget uh, as introduced. Uh, do we have a motion to open to the public? Motion. Second. Seconded. Moved and seconded. Any discussion or seeing none? Uh, all interest in opening to the public, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. We are open to the public to speak on the Hamilton Street. Budget only, not on any other issues. 
Uh, two minutes to speak. They come up once. Uh, no yielding of time. State your name and address. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Anybody from the public wishing to speak, we ask that you use the chat function, raise hand, or if you're dialed in by phone, dial star three. I'm not seeing anyone. I am not either, Mr. Mayor. Seeing no one come coming forward from the public, I'll close a uh, motion to close the public portion of the hearing. Seconded. Yes. Moved and seconded. See no discussion. And looking one more time, don't see anyone. All in favor of closing public discussion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Motion is carried. And now on to the item resolution 21 uh, 118. Resolution 21 118 adopt the calendar year 2021 Hamilton Street Special Improvement District budget as introduced is presented to the Township Council for adoption. Do we have a motion? So no. seconded. Moved and seconded. Um, so this um, budget is going out. We, as we discussed before, there's no assessment this year. Uh, any other discussion? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassing? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaffa? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bastanella. Yes. Item number 13, public hearing and adoption of ordinances on second reading. We have ordinance 4339-21, an ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank NJSA 40A 40-5.14 for calendar year 2021 is presented to the public is presented for public hearing and final adoption. The public hearing has been noticed as required. Do we have a motion to open to the public? So moved. Seconded. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor of opening to the public say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. We are open to the public. Um, Two minutes, no yielding of times. Please state your name and address. Mr. McQueen. Yes, again, anybody from the public wishing to speak, we ask that you use the chat function raise hand feature, or if you're dialed in by phone, hit star three. I'm looking, I'm looking. I do not see anybody. Nor do I. Seeing no one coming forward from the public to speak, I'll motion to close the public portion of the hearing on this ordinance. Looking for a second. 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 Moved in, seconded. All in favor of closing public portion, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. Public portion is closed. Do we have a motion on the item? I'll move. Second. Moved and seconded. So this is again the cap bank. We're not exceeding budget limitations. This is that we can, because we're not raising taxes, we can stow away that 2% if we need to increase later. Um, any other comments? Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrassing? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaffa? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Bastinella? Yes. Okay, we are now, well, there's no first reading. Item number 14, item number 15 is the consent agenda. Items A through I as listed on the consent agenda portion of this meeting are presented to the Township Council for adoption. Do we have a motion? Anybody? So moved. Moved. Seconded. seconded. Moved and seconded. Excellent work. Uh, any discussion? Anyone want to pull an item uh, or uh, highlight an item? Speak now or forever. 
me move my script out of the way. No one is budging. Um, Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaffa? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Okay, we're on to item 16. Uh, resolutions to be voted on separately. Both of these are separate because they're add ons. Uh, I want to highlight item B. So, uh, resolution, we'll do them separately. Resolution 21 128 authorized grant submission SCA local recreation improvement grant 2021 for $200,000. Um, do we have a motion on the grant uh, application? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? Madam Master Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Item B is resolution 2021. I'm mean, sorry. Item B is resolution 21 129. Um, request Biden administration to take immediate action to assist India and other developing countries in need with COVID 19 with the COVID 19 crisis. To um, Councilman M Ambarasan, would you like to make the motion? Uh, yes, I do. And Councilwoman Sheba Udine, would you like to second it? Second. Moved and seconded. Any comments on this motion? I mean, I made the comment earlier, again, uh, just to emphasize again, uh, the U.S. has opened up the lines to India at this time. So we thank the administration for their quick reversal of their initial position. And uh, we, we just cannot stop there. We must do everything we can to help people in the other places where they are less fortunate than what we are. Um, nearly 40%, 42% of the U.S. Uh, has been vaccinated, um, 330 million people, um, but less than 2% of 1.3 billion people in India uh, have received the vaccine. So wide, wide disparity, and um, I hope uh, we do everything we can to uh, help the country. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a comment. Yes. I, I think uh, to piggyback on what you said earlier, I think it's a shame that we in America, we have three different vaccines that we can choose from. And we're sitting here talking about, do we want to take it or don't we want to take it when we have three to choose from? That to me is a travesty when you look at what's going on in India. We have so much to be thankful for, and we, we take so much for granted in, in America, and we need to stop that. And what goes on over in the other parts of the world will affect us, affects everybody globally. So let's all do what we can to help our neighbors in other countries. And, and I think this is a great idea that we're doing this resolution. Thank you. Well said, Councilwoman, far more eloquently than I said it. Anyone else? So my little uh, bit on this is not only is it the right thing to do from a moral point of view, it's the right thing to do from a public health point of view. If anywhere in the world, a billion people are allowed to continue to have this virus fester, that's a threat to us. So anything we're doing to help them is, is helping us. Uh, so I thank you, Councilman, for bringing up this resolution. Unless there are any other comments, Madam Clerk. Councilman Embarrasson? Yes. Councilman Chase? Yes. Councilwoman Francois? Absolutely, yes. Mayor Kramer? Yes. Councilman Oni Jaka? Yes. Councilwoman Pruitt? Yes. Councilwoman Udine? Yes. Deputy Mayor Vassanella? Yes. Mayor, I just wanted to uh, recognize you. Uh, I think when we spoke uh, earlier in the week, uh, I think uh, yesterday, uh, I think you know you had asked 
if uh, I wasn't going to do the resolution and you had asked me if uh, we could do anything to help uh, the situation in India. And that's when we came up with the idea to do the resolution. So I uh, thank you for your uh, thoughtfulness. You're too kind. Um, moving on to old business 2021 boards, committees, commissions and vacancies. Uh, do we have any nominations? Uh, Ms. Mayor, I do have one nomination. Uh, we had uh, seen the resume of uh, Mr. Subendu Singh, and he had applied uh, uh, to uh, be a account uh, to be a commissioner at um, Human Relations Commissions to uh, take the un uh, unexpired uh, term un of uh, Milo. Uh, so we uh, I'd like to I like to nominate him uh, for that. Uh, uh, position and HRC. Are there any Second. other nominations for that position? Mayor, there's no nominations and, and I don't mean to go out of um, sequence here. I just wanted to thank Milo Thompson for his years and years of service to the human relations and other organizations in town. I have no other nomination. Thank you. Okay, I hear no other nominations for that position. Any nominations for any other positions? So we can do this by acclamation. All in favor of Mr. Singh on the Human Relations Committee, say aye. 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 Opposed, say nay. It's carried. Congratulations, Mr. Singh. And unfortunately for council, we have an executive session. Resolution 21-139, authorized executive session, potential open space acquisition preserving some of that canopy. Copper Mine Road is presented to the Township Council for adoption. Do we have a motion? No move. And a I second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed say nay. Motion is carried. We're going to go into public session now. And after we come out of public session, no uh, official action will be taken other than coming out of PEC public session and closing the meeting. So executive, executive session. I think you meant to say we're going into private session, not public session. So I'm sorry. Thank that, you. That's yeah. quite all right. And they'll they'll and just to so the, the public understands there will not be any action taken after this will end this Zoom meeting. Yes. Uh, WebEx meeting, excuse me. <laughs> this, okay, so we're going into executive session. And this is going to end this meeting. There'll be no recording after this and no actions taken. Um, good night, Franklin. Be well, Franklin. Have a